So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, dear guests, uh, welcome to Ten Cent Media and uh, WF's uh, co-organized uh, forum on AI. Uh, thank you for your presence. Uh, welcome. As we know, uh, regarding AI, uh, there are numerous uh, forums on this uh, topic. Uh, every moment you hear this kind of keyword and uh, progress be made. And in the video, for example, you saw different uh, scenarios and uh, imaginations. And uh, so this is really a hot topic nowadays. And uh, But this is our reality. Uh, many people say is that uh, we are faced with the uh, so-called 4.0 uh, uh, industrial revolution, uh, qu which could be the biggest, largest uh, industrial revolution. And it changed our pace uh, due to AI. Uh, it's a kind of a disruption, and uh, we are going upward so drastically. And what, what we'll be faced with, we are discussing uh, and uh, this kind of forum will continue, I believe, uh, every moment. Uh, even when uh, we are holding this uh, forum uh, in certain places in the world, uh, there is uh, breakthroughs uh, in the technology of AI, and uh, some uh, major changes are being made. And uh, in different moments uh, ho we are holding this kind of forum, uh, we have to update our knowledge, and uh, we have to update our imagination even. And we have uh, some uh, experts, entrepreneurs, uh, and uh, scientists uh, uh, here today with us. Uh, so uh, they will be uh, talking about their understanding uh, regarding AI and uh, the prospect and the challenges and opportunities, of course. And uh, they will describe for us uh, what kind of a f future world we'll be faced with. Uh, different people are telling us that the future world will be totally different from an today's world. So uh, I'm fortunate to have uh, these uh, panelists with me today. Uh, firstly, we have uh, um, Professor Joanna Bryson from Bath University of the UK and the uh, Computer Science Department. And the uh, next one is uh, the president and CEO of, of uh, Splunk company, Doug uh, Merritt. Thirdly is uh, Mr. Liu Jinren, uh, representing the new soft uh, China, and uh, also Mr. Zhou Kui from uh, Square Foundation uh, Capital, and uh, we also uh, so welcome you all. And uh, what kind of, we also have uh, the uh, Kirsty Kajulat, late uh, president of uh, Estonia. And uh, faced uh, with uh, AI, and especially in the next 10 to, uh, five to 10 years, uh, we'll be faced with uh, different important milestones and uh, important nodes. And uh, at this moment, uh, what kind of uh, moment we are in? Uh, could you describe for us? Uh, certainly, you have your specialty fields. Uh, and uh, my first question is to Mr. Liu, uh, Liu Jiren. You are the first generation uh, of doctor in computer science, uh, and uh, you represent uh, the uh, represent uh, uh, new soft, uh, a uh, a uh, computer science uh, company. So you are one of the earliest uh, who was in touch with uh, AI. And from your first-hand experience, what kind of uh, stage we are in now? Uh, also, what will be the next few years? Uh, by looking at the technology, by looking at the past decades, we really set up uh, a digitalized world. We laid a foundation and infrastructure and the platforms. Number one, the computing costs uh, is uh, being driven down. Once it was very costly, now computing costs uh, has and storage has become cheaper and cheaper. Uh, telecommunication has become cheaper, and this kind of uh, cheapers are in a still in a continuum. And also, digital uh, equipment uh, or device has become everyone's uh, device uh, put together. We got to see. Uh, this world of connectivity has become faster, convenient, and cheaper. 
And therefore, uh, on, on the basis of uh, this, we see more uh, the multiple uh, applications uh, which made today's world different. We see uh, e-commerce, uh, e-learning. We got to see uh, different kinds of uh, social uh, media and the platforms and, uh, and uh, the connection between people and uh, objects. And uh, so real time, uh, cheaper, cheaper and cheaper, actually. And this uh, has led to we, uh, uh, this led to some major breakthroughs, uh, like in AI. When I was a university student, uh, I read about AI and uh, also uh, virtual reality. And uh, we see upheavals, uh, ups and downs. But uh, why AI has not been turned into a reality? Because we did not have a foundation or infrastructure in place. However, uh, nowadays, uh, computing, computing uh, nowadays, we can do computing uh, to do weather prediction uh, forecast and uh, in an instant. But uh, once uh, you, it took two days to predict the weather, and the storage also has become cheaper and cheaper. Another major change is the, the extraction of data has become more proactive and cheaper as well. And once when you want to get uh, data, you have to purchase uh, the data. But now you have free data, uh, people are Contributing data, even about their privacy, their 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 track record uh, and behavior, their lifestyle, they are contributing all these. And uh, in a digital society, and uh, you have uh, more accuracy in uh, identifying different individuals, their behavior. All these uh, changes in uh, in discussing AI, the foundation is totally different today than yesterday. And once we talked about how, what kind of algorithm, and, uh, and once we thought the algorithm was not speed enough, but the speed is not a, is not a problem. And once uh, you did not have enough preconditions, like data information, but you got sufficient data information, and so this is unprecedented. Uh, and uh, what is AI and uh, what kind of legal status uh, should it have and ethical issues uh, surrounding AI. This is something we never experienced before. And uh, so because these data uh, has given us uh, a totally new world. Uh, now worldwide, uh, we see uh, more and more population uh, living in another space uh, and uh, their commercial behavior, governance, and uh, it's totally different uh, from uh, yesterday because of the differences. Uh, so they turned into economies, they turned into cultures, they turned into some uh, major challenges and issues we have to discuss. Uh, talking about the next five to 10 years, uh, what will be the made biggest major change? Uh, we will see not to talk about uh, more laws, uh, accumulation, cheaper and uh, better, faster. Certainly, this this is something we will see. But in the next 10 years, after 10 years, our understanding about the whole world will be more accurate. And uh, the relationship between different objects, we will have a clearer picture and uh, put together. And uh, if we come up with a new algorithm, then regarding every sector today, we'll be talking about uh, internet and uh, people and their connection with people. Now all these sectors, uh, technology has become uh, a uh, disruptor or promoter of the internet. So in the next 10 years, we will get to see something we never got to see 20, 20 years in the, in the past 20 years or 30 years, it will come faster and faster because of digitalization and a better accuracy and more business models, new business models as well. Uh, China, for example, on this kind of platforms, uh, more and more Chinese companies uh, are coming into being and uh, their productivity is uh, being enhanced uh, and uh, entrepreneurs of uh, startups, uh, they are becoming younger and younger, they accumulate wealth more quickly and this is something we never experienced, especially those who did not have any capital, only got a brain power and they could have a startup, uh, startup. and uh, this is something we will get to see in the next uh, 20 years, 10 years, digital startups to accumulate wealth and to come up with new business models. We, I call it a new, something a new normal. Now I have a question for Joanna. Uh, you started in the 80s. Uh, you, got in, uh, you got involved in AI computers. <clears throat> 
I mean, Oops. what kind of? <laughs> sorry, he was translating you for a while. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> I mean, you have uh, started your research uh, concerning to uh, uh, computer and AI since 80s. Yes. Yeah. So that's a long time. Yeah. So, so I really want to know your feeling about the, those biggest change compared to those times, and uh, what is the most exciting thing lying ahead? Oh, wow, well, OK. <laughs> um, let's see. So I think the biggest change is not because of artificial intelligence itself. It's not the algorithms, but it has been, as everybody says, the expanding of the computers, the expanding of the internet. And so, and then of course since 2007, the expanding of the personal data. So, so it isn't been the details of AI that's changed. But in the last uh, two or three years, what's been changing radically is the governance. It went from being uh, toys to changing the world. And we've seen it change in, uh, in democracies, that there's been a challenge to democracy. Um, and so now people pay attention. Also, there's the change uh, both on both sides of the Great Firewall. There has been a change of the tech companies becoming more powerful than petrochemical and then manufacturing. So that's a big change. There's a big change in power structures. So I think it isn't. Uh, and I loved your video, but I don't entirely agree with it. It's really? not that artificial intelligence is a bunch of people. Um, you know, with, there was a focus on these robots. Um, artificial intelligence is a means by which humans get control and information over their world, including each other. And so I think um, the challenges, the biggest challenges going forward uh, that we're spending a lot of time on is... Uh, how do we handle the problems of um, accountability? I agree, I, don't think, I actually don't think we need a lot of new laws. I think what we need is to help people to enforce the old laws and to hold accountable companies that were not doing the correct things with respect to uh, being careful. So some companies, for example, Facebook, became very powerful maybe even not entirely intentionally, and then they weren't following the best business practice. And if the courts find them incorrect, then they should be held accountable. So I think that we're making companies are incredibly powerful. They're very rich. They're transnational. We need to figure out new ways to negotiate with that. I don't think that was really the question you asked me. So just to say, the technology and, I, and before this session, I had thought this, when I first heard someone say, I would be most excited if we could do live translation and everyone <laughs> everywhere <laughs> talks in their own language, uh -huh. <laughs> like we have here, but we real. use people. That, that will. Yeah. I think I keep expecting at one of these meetings, we're all going to have these headphones, and it's going to be, and it won't be as good as the people. The, it, but we it, can cook something here. <laughs> well, no, because it is still, we won't get the idioms. We won't understand all the pieces. It's still worth learning another language. Mm -hmm. but, it's, uh, but it will be like Google Translate online. At least we could get the words and kind of guess if we know enough about the culture. So I would, I would love. To, to have everybody speak in their native language all the time. That would yeah. be great. We're looking forward to it. <laughs> OK. I want to ask you, Mr. Zhou Kui, very famous um, startup company founder and, uh, and also the uh, investors. Would you please do share with me your view? What are the fundamental or the most important change we are experiencing? And uh, in your vision in the future, of course, you will select some major changes have great impact on the companies, on the industries. Well, we are in the process of uh, informatization. Technology is a big step of uh, humanity's civilization. And everything could be digitalized. We could stay connected. We can pull things together for algorithm and computation. And a lot of things are enabled. 
the symbol of the civilization is saved at cloud. Yesterday, in Shanghai, we invited Amazon, Tencent, Google. We said that the uh, people wisdom could be calculated and computed and saved at cloud. Such kind of wisdom, you know, we in China we say that uh, old elderly citizens are most uh, wise people, but you know the cloud stay young forever, and the brain of the cloud is expanding, and uh, exceeding the individual capacity of a single brain. AlphaGo is uh, one of the milestones, and the chess is so difficult, and I believe it will have a lot of. Uh, Challenge to people. We need to get used to many changes. The 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 top wisdom in the society could be accessed by everyone at cloud. Maybe it's not today. We already see such a uh, a progress. Maybe some of your personal life and your career choice, your personal choice, your career choice, need to get adaptive to such a change. I believe these are the changes we are having now, and we can form such a structure. We may have a very, very super, super social brain in the cloud, which is able to support everyone. Well, I think that uh, individual personality, individual person, can already get a tech, uh, tech. Wisdom, which means that the mobile phones, you, you you can do it on your mobile phone, which cannot be imagined in the past. I'm able to see my location, the accurate location, which was um, you cannot imagine 20 years ago. I believe this is what we have nowadays, and uh, in the the wisdom of the informatization is growing quickly. People believe that the connectivity is uh, growing quickly. It's also the accumulated wisdom are also growing. Well, within your own your own vision, which industry or sector will enjoy the fastest growth? I think it's the industry still uh, in difficulties. Whenever we talk about the technological revolution, we often say it it was the change of mobility. We know that the mobility is one of the highest cost of human lives, and the mobility, transportation, the um, uh, autonomous driving. Five years ago, I thought it was not difficult. You know, nowadays I think it's much uh, less time. We and. Uh, uh, we already have some uh, uh, license for the autonomous driving. Maybe in the next five years, I could even use a uh, autonomous driving vehicle, so, and you can try it. You can use it in the next five years or less in some regional range. Transportation or mobility is one of the topic of people's life, and which is usually cost some money. Healthcare. It's difficult to educate a student to become a doctor, and the doctor has to receive education in the past eight to nine years before he is qualified as doctor. But such a medical information and knowledge could be accumulated and used by by the machines. When this brain or the machine brain is able to help you, you know that we can have faster training of the doctors when providing treatment to the patients, and they are more accurate, and they will have less mistakes made. But you know this is a rising part. It's just started. The other industry or sectors, Take security as an example. You know that we have vulnerabilities, and the machine brain has less vulnerabilities. 
it, it is able to identify everything in its memory. Why not I use it to serve for the security purpose? Of course, it brings new problems and challenges. The other things, for example, China is a large manufacturing country. Why? Because China has a large population base. And I used to work within a plant. There are so many assembly line and the testing line. In assembly line, you can do the assembly by the machines. But to test, we have visual inspection at the plant. Humans are slower than the machines in the visual inspection. Not only the speed, but also the quality. For example, the uh, Apple mobile phone, and it is not the do the job is not done by people. It must be done by the uh, machines. There are a lot of uh, sectors and industries, and uh, we will see penetration of uh, such a technology. Anyway. The companies will be driven partially by AI. People say that AI is not a uh, special industry, but it will go into any kind of industry. I know that uh, Mr. Xiao, you are, and uh, I know that uh, you are one of the pioneer in AI in combination with uh, internet. Uh, Mr. Zhou talked about uh, security. Probably you have uh, more things to say on that. In terms of finance or other sectors, what do you think are some surprising changes you want to tell us? In the past several years, we, we, we do see radical changes in the world every day. People feel depression in fear of the possible changes or replacement by AI. You know that uh, Chinese people are very smart and uh, work diligently, and we develop practical science and technology. The application of AI in China at present, we, which we, we see very clearly, which can create most value within the commercial use, is the uh, advertisement algorithm, the advertisement uh, push up. The other thing is that in the uh, new finance, it already creates new value. We do see the profit driven by AI. And autonomous driving, which is still under experiment, which is not ready. But in finance, we already have it. In terms of uh, finance, and there is a concept, you know, that in China, which is the earliest industry which which is uh, uh, is uh, digitalized? That is the bank or informatization. In the past, we had a large machines, large computers. In financial sector, they have a very good storage of data. But how to use the data? How to apply data within the financial sector, which was not discussed in the past? China's population billion, one point four billion population, you know, the supply and demand is not in right balance, especially when providing financial service to the individual in China. The integrity system in China is not quite sound, different from U.S., which has a lot of faculty data. There is a uh, inadequate of uh, integrity or the uh, credit rating data of, of that in China. Once AI penetrated into finance, can create a lot of uh, value. The first one is in terms of uh, anti-fraud and the background check. And the result of using AI in financial industry can drive down your cost, which means bring money to you. The other thing in the small loan operation, you know that usually in traditional industry, they why they did not want to get into the, uh, they do not want to serve the individual because um, they have uh, a lot of uh, cost, and uh, they they have a lot of cost of application for claiming back the loan, and uh, all of this could be addressed by solution by the AI solution. In the past years, we followed closely with the uh, technology how to implement the technology. It is true that from the uh, customer acquisition and how to pick the right customer, for example, um, w what we can offer to them financially. And also we use some AI recommendation algorithm to our customers. The other thing is the, uh, before the approval, before the loan and anti-fraud, 
we talked so much about the uh, data generated at the terminals, which can help us to identify some small risks of, uh, of uh, fraud. I still remember several years ago, we find out one case of uh, uh, fraud. And in the past, we can only identify the fraud by hundreds of uh, thousands of examples. But now, some small possibility of fraud could be detected by several cases because the machines have uh, self-learning checking the orders and the location of the transactions, which can uh, greatly prevent risk. And in our pro pro approval, 90% of them are automatic without uh, human interference. Post loan management within our system, and our organization is not very large, maybe a uh, tenth of a billion asset under our management. What's the quality of the asset? The new, uh, the uh, asset from last month, how much, how much percentage is good? How much of them were not working? You know that there are uh, 6,000 variables. There are so many variables how to make the analysis by the people. We have machine learned automatically. They can identify the uh, MPL. We are able to optimize the models so that in the post-loan management, we can accurately identify the risk to make our AUM in a healthy way. The other thing is the uh, claiming back of the loan. And we also use the AI technology and we can lower our cost, and we can make our financial service more inclusive within the industry. Therefore, in financial sector, AI has one single application, but already a good symbol showing that the whole industry chain already received the benefits. I believe that in the coming days, with the more practical application of AI, we will see efficiency growth in the society. The service received by us will have lower cost. Um, you have two two products. One is called Eagle Eye, which is very uh, interesting. Another expert at data, right? Your your company uh, is very popular now. It's analyzing and collecting data and help other companies to make better choice, the smart choice, right? So Correct. so <laughs> so, what's your opinion of your perspective of what kind of moment we're in and uh, what is the biggest change lying ahead? So I think, like all the other panelists said. We're in the very early days right now of what's possible. Um, as, a, as much excitement as there is around digital transformation um, and IoT, the number of processes that truly are censored end to end and the ability to collect that data is still really early and nascent. Um, when I look forward, I think for all of us to have a healthy society, um, you know, there's always going to be risks and benefits to a new technology. With every progress comes risks and benefits, and AI and machine learning have got that same edge of good and bad. Um, but part of the benefit should be how do we expose as many people to be able to participate in the way of this coming? Um, and what, what we see with the many organizations we're working with is there's three core aspects that I think will help the, the, a broader base um, benefit. The first is open access to data. We've been all, all been talking about data on the panel, uh, and I view data as the oxygen for machine yeah. learning or for AI. It's the backbone, it's the fuel, it's the fuel. capability yeah. that we will all need to continue to progress um, our overall attempts at machine learning and artificial intelligence. And right now, there's a lot of data becoming available as everything becomes censored. Um, but I think we have to strike a healthy balance between anon anonymity of data and protecting rights and still making data available so we can see the gains in healthcare, in retail, in financial services that are possible if we really have access to massive broad base of non-structured and structured data. I think hand in hand, in hand with that access is the trustworthiness of data. Uh, we've, you know, we all hear reports of manipulation that's now possible in many different fronts. How do you, and, and not just data, but then obviously the algorithms that operate on the data, data, given that there's a very tight, virtuous circle between application different algorithms and the data sets that you're manipulating, how do you get visibility and trust on the lineage of data 
Now, obviously, blockchain and distributed ledger can be one of those aspects, but it goes through many stages, is touched many times, and if you can't trust the foundation of the element that you're working with or you don't know um, where it's been and how it's been enhanced in some way, I think that, that starts to minimize, again, the potential for societal gain, um, but also could take AI and, and tracks that we wouldn't always understand with that transparency. Um, and then the third piece that I think is absolutely critical that lots of people have been talking about is how do we lower the, the, the bar and capability set so that more people can participate? So we can democratize data, democratize machine learning um, so that the average citizen that's not a data scientist that may not have been trained in uh, very deep computing capability can still benefit. Um, and I think we're seeing a lot of tooling, if, if we can get access open and we can get trustworthy and transparency high, I think we're seeing a lot of tooling be birthed that uh, is able to both represent algorithms and data sets in ways that, that our story processing brain, which is not a logic processing brain uh, through evolution, in ways that our story processing brain can actually attach to. Um, and, and if we do it properly, I think the ingredient that humans can continue to rely on is curiosity. And where, where general purpose AI still has a long way to go is that non sequitur linking of different patterns and the curiosity to really investigate and interrogate those patterns. So with open access, trustworthiness, training, enhanced curiosity and accessibility of that data, um, then there will, I think there'll be continued movement um, overall for this fourth industrial revolution, but ideally in more positive ways than negative ways as we get collective participation and, and, uh, and, and the benefits that can come with that. Yeah. And positive things and negative things, we're, we're going to face it together. <laughs> we, yeah. we have no choice. <laughs> <laughs> we have no choice. Yeah, from data use, so from the data use perspective, uh, we are still in the early st uh, stage. I read a report which says that uh, according to maturity curve of AI, 86% of the AI technology has not uh, got into maturity. Even by 2022, uh, even 40% would not uh, be mature, get into mainstream market. But 85% uh, of the technology will bring transformational opportunities for different uh, sectors and bring lots of values. So we're still on the way. And uh, I have a question for Mr. Liu, uh, uh, Liu Jiren. And uh, regarding the sectoral changes, uh, once we, we, call, we call it, uh, it's like oxygen, data is like oxygen, and uh, algorithm uh, we, we have, and uh, put together there will be a new engine and uh, to make, to upgrade uh, different industries, uh, different uh, sectors, uh, and, but for some sectors, uh, this could be disruptions. So my question for you is about looking at the changes to different industries, to societies, uh, what kind of uh, forecast uh, prediction you have. Uh, I think uh, these uh, changes will be huge. Let me take uh, healthcare as example. Uh, healthcare or medicine in any country in the past uh, decades or even 100 years of history, we intended to give uh, our people better health care, better uh, welfare, but uh, no country has been able to uh, hold up the burden to uh, the, the, the uh, for, uh, because our payers and the service providers are separated, are severed, and uh, service the. So and the patients and uh, and the medical service providers are severed, are separated, and uh, we lack uh, transparency. We cannot ask a doctor why you give me this injection, why did why did you prescribe this medicine, and also in different uh, cities, we also see a disparity in healthcare in medicine. And therefore, the conclusion is that we'll see, we will see a continued increase in the healthcare burden in different countries. But they are related to how to optimize our medical care system. Firstly, we see lots of separations, not very good connectivity, because we have no good handle on data. And anyone in any city, you 
would not be able to get to know which hospital is the right one for you, which one is the most affordable for you. You do not know. You just know which is one is the best. So we always go to the, the best hospitals. But the best one doesn't mean that's the right hospital for you. Uh, they may not, not have the doctors to treat you, and they could be very costly. And uh, in this kind of uh, background, uh, so AI in the future certainly will play its role in medical care. I think uh, there are several folds of the roles to be played by AI. Firstly, the uh, we have uh, we have uh, we have a different uh, objectives, uh, and uh, for, uh, that is uh, how to. Uh, beat the medical doctors, and uh, that's uh, our. Uh, but that's not our, our objective anymore. We want to turn the worst doctor into the best, and uh, we do not want just AI to beat the best doctors. Uh, and uh, if uh, we can turn the worst doctors, uh, uh, turn them into best doctors only by five percentage, they will give us more benefits to the society. Because uh, most of us, uh, 70 to 80 percent of us, uh, the our diseases are common ailments uh, and chronic diseases or treatable diseases, curable diseases. But you do not get cured. You do not get the right diagnosis. Diagnosis. It doesn't mean that by going to the visit of the best doctors. Uh, 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 you 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 would get uh, uh, treated or cured. That's not the picture today. And uh, also in China, we have uh, the regional disparities uh, at the county level. The do many medical doctors uh, even do not hold a degree, medical uh, uh, degree. And uh, we have a farmer to farmer uh, uh, treatment. We call it barefooted doctors in China. And so in medical care. Uh, AI, if we can turn the worst doctors into the best ones, if we can the, turn the best doctors into many more, how we can turn best doctors in, into many more? Uh, they can turn their methodology into algor algorithm. Uh, their uh, their plan, the medical plan, can be connected to other doctors, uh, so they uh, so they the prescription can become best uh, practices uh, to go to the most remote areas to treat people there, and I think uh, this is something we needed to pay attention to, but we have a long way to go. And uh, from a China's perspective uh, in medical care, firstly. Our population, it's beyond their affordability, and because of the diagnosis, has is has got a problem. It's not just the drugs are expensive. The most expensive part is the diagnosis. You got a wrong diagnosis, and then you you were prescribed the wrong medicines. And that makes your treatment very expensive. Secondly, your disease could be treated in a village at the county level, but you, but you took a train to Beijing. And to wait in, in Beijing for two months, uh, one month or two months, uh, and that made your uh, medical care very expensive because there's a lack of uh, trust uh, for, uh, to, uh, to hospitals as you have to move to bigger cities to get a treatment. Therefore, in medical care, uh, if uh, you do not go beyond medical care, if you just want to adopt some reform measures to uh, to uh, ask the doctor to be cheaper, to ask hospital to be cheaper, you cannot solve the problem because uh, our doctors are like artists. Doctors are artists. They are artists. So uh, and uh, so you have an eye on a doctor. You want, just want to go to him, but we need artists. But we also need engineers of doctors, uh, and uh, engineer. We, we engineers can deal with the most can deal with the most basic problems, and. Uh, the payment can also make change, uh, can make some changes uh, through AI. I think AI can play the biggest role, and there's the biggest possibility for AI to play a role in medical care. And for the society, we can feel the benefits very easily if AI is uh, deployed in medical care. So, Mr. Zhou, talking about uh, the economic structure changes, uh, what kind of disruptions uh, we will witness uh, in the near future? And Mr. Liu talking about. Uh, medical care. So which uh, sector would be transformed thoroughly by AI? I quite agree with what Mr. Liu said. It's about inclusiveness. I mentioned uh, 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 AI is to be used by uh, all of us. 
And uh, other sectors also have this kind of a feature. So, for example, medical doctors, uh, teachers, education. I think that w would be a big sector for AI. Uh, between teachers and the students, uh, uh, they may give uh, students assignments, just like doctors. But we require skills uh, on the part of uh, prof uh, professors. But the communication is uh, one to one-on-one -on, -one, uh, on a small scale. And AI, uh, regarding knowledge, per se, and uh, regarding the uh, the teaching of knowledge, for example, uh, my uh, my my personal experience is uh, one teacher teaching dozens of us, and uh, uh, and uh, ninety percent of my homework uh, were correct, and uh, ten were mistaken. But I spent a lot of time on the correct ones, uh, correct items, and. Uh, uh, but the the we put the students into batchments. Uh, uh, we uh, uh, we can in, we can ensure the uh, the most basic quality, and uh, but in the future, we will have a tailor-made teaching education. It won't they, they won't be luxury as well, and the tailor-made won't be just for luxuries. And uh, teaching as a process, uh, in the pro teaching process. You will face with uh, different kinds of uh, mishaps, uh, un unexpected uh, events. But a machine can uh, do management on the mishaps. And uh, after they discover the mishaps, uh, the people will step in. And, uh, and, and uh, when machines got uh, involved, when there, when there are mishaps, they send off a signal. And the human beings uh, will step in. And uh, this can happen in many sectors. Uh, and uh, AI can discover mishaps uh, in teaching process for the kid started to cry. And uh, then the machine will send out uh, a signal. And a teacher will come over, human teacher will come over to intervene. And so this kind of thing will happen in many sectors. So I call it major changes. So Joanna. Economy, industry, or social order, social structure? Oh, wow. Thank you for that question. <laughs> That's one of my favorite questions right now. I think this is really a huge issue. And I want to say, in the first place, I don't want to make an open prediction because what we do matters. And that's why I travel. I think it really matters that we get engaged and we use our brains and we try to build a better future. Um, but specifically, I, I, I almost want to take the question back to uh, Professor Liu. When you say make the, the worst doctors the best doctors, that sounds great. I get really excited. That's why I got into AI. But then, because I've been learning about economics, I know that means everyone can be a doctor. Does that mean a doctor is no longer a prestigious position? So one of the things that we're worried about is, is artificial intelligence affecting inequality? And I know that this question is very different in a, a traditional capitalist versus a traditional communist society. But it seems that uh, social coherence comes from the ability of people to move between uh, jobs and to have trust mm -hmm. so that there isn't just an upper echelon and a lower echelon mm -hmm. totally separate from each mm -hmm. other. Mm -hmm. We want a, a continuum. So, and I, I'm not saying, this is not a challenge, it's a question. I sincerely wonder what all the consequences are, although I'm working for them too. Uh, but, but this is a, it's a big, big issue. Yeah. The, second, the second part of it is, I mentioned before, um, the transnational question, when uh, there is one big winner. And again, China is famously the exception. That's why I mentioned the firewall, that they have been able to create and ring fence uh, a tech sector here separately has been really interesting. Um, but in general, it tends for the rest of us outside of China, we have all the big companies in, in one country, and, and they're getting a lot of wealth. And even in China, a lot of wealth is going to these same, the, the mirror companies, right? Like Tencent. Um, so how, how you handle that in your economy is a big question, especially within a, one country, the government can, can work. But outside, when it's multi-companies, uh, multiple countries, 
then there's that, who is the government then? How do you agree how to deal with that wealth? Mm. Um, so, and then finally, oh, there was another piece I wanted to say of the economic social council. Oh, finally, the AI itself, and we, there's been a little mention of this, it shouldn't be the thing that has responsibility. So I, again, this goes back to the person thing. But people talk about making uh, AI a legal person so that, so that uh, the driverless car, for example, has its own liabilities. It's a, it's a convenient thing that's called a legal person, like a company. And so when uh, Professor Liu said there was no uh, precedent, some people say companies are the precedent, that they're a form of AI. But when a company is not, when the people who own the company don't really care what happens to it, this is called a shell company. And when we have shell companies, then we have corruption. And I was very excited by what you said about the looking for fraud. Uh, so you can create fraud. You can, say, build a building deliberately so that it goes bankrupt so that you hide money, right, circulation. If the reason that can happen is that no one, no human, so, so justice works by applying, for example, jail or, or a loss of face to a human. The machine doesn't care. And we cannot make mm -hmm. the machine care mm -hmm. um, in a way that wouldn't, we can't unmake mm -hmm. because we build the machine. Mm -hmm. It's not like a person. Mm -hmm. So with us, we, we are built, even fish are built to care what the society mm -hmm. thinks. Mm -hmm. So we care. So we have to maintain the, uh, the legal personhood with humans. And if anything, we've overextended it already. That's why we have these shell companies. Mm -hmm. So I think mm -hmm. that's a very essential part to uh, the economic and social order. Mm. This is very interesting, and we do see some many exciting changes and a series of um, uh, uh, consequences. And they go, they rise and uh, go down together. And uh, that's why it's uh, highly significant to discuss them. We need to get prepared for welcome these changes. I want to ask Mr. Xiao. And Joanna have talked so many things. And uh, I cannot uh, elaborate all, all of them. And these are great problems. And uh, Mr. Liu, you talked about the doctor's issue. And you know, maybe in the future, the banks don't need people. People often talk about employment structures. And it is a trend that's. Um, and how could people become AI-driven people? You know, companies could become AI-driven companies, and the people might be phased out by AI. And how to help them to find new places? And 70% of the jobs will disappear. Of course, the data different are different. And so what is your view on this? This is one of the trend people uh, you are, you you have the worries too early, and even the replacement uh, take takes place. It takes time, and uh, many historically jobs were disappearing, and but new jobs showing up. In the past, we had no programmer, we have no product managers, and uh, when we are facing to the job, uh, to to this problem, and uh, the change will not be that sudden. Even though the society is in fast ch changing, but it is uh, still a slow penetration. And you know that the people are the uh, species most or highly adaptive to the world in the earth. In the long term and the middle term, we don't need so much a uh, repetitive labor or the uh, manual work. And very likely, we are going to have a more creative or innovative people. There are so, so much a uh, population. Maybe people can take off, can uh, have holidays one after another, and we take terms to go on holidays. And what do we need? And if if there is a AI help us to have our daily life in good order, and uh, like our food accommodation, I believe AI makes people happier, and so we can um, we are uh, free of the troubles and the repetitive work. We can be with our families. We can develop our interests. We don't need to invest our time and resources to do some uh, mechanical or repetitive work, routine work like clean up and cooking. 
and I think that we can do more things and interesting things and to change this world. And what kind of people? And from now on, you can't expect what kind of technology you want and what do we need to save and uh, so that you can get prepared for the future. Well, what we need to have or what kind of things we need to learn and you need to follow your own interest to get adaptive to the social changes. And it's not that so you do some repetitive work and it is true, it's very likely you will be re replaced by machines and you need to show respect to the future and you can try something unknown and challenge the future and uh, uh, change yourself to get adaptive and uh, prepared. If you can data to company and then help them make the, the smart choice, decision, do we still need entrepreneur? <laughs> Maybe you can, you can tell, the, the data will tell them how to do that. Yeah. Um, uh, data is not intelligence, data is data. <laughs> so there's still the, going back to um, the earlier comments on, we are not always as creative as we could be. Uh -huh. In the 1800s, if you told a farmer, uh, the world is going to go 90% non-agriculture, mm. mm. and there's machines that will do everything that you do today. Mm -hmm. But somehow we're going to still have global unemployment under 10%. I think very few people would have rushed forward and mm -hmm. said, oh, fantastic, mm -hmm. I can't, w can't mm -hmm. wait to imagine what those jobs are. Um, so we, we do find a way to adapt, but, but it is, it's, a scary, it's always scary. Socioeconomic yeah. changes uh, are not smoothly taken up. And what can we do this time to get in front of it? What, what can we do on skill development um, and rapid retraining? Because we will lose jobs. Those yeah. repetitive jobs um, that the Industrial Revolution created will likely go away. Mm -hmm. um, and we need to help our population become, we, we need the right frameworks and the right delivery mm -hmm. so that people can quickly get into new areas that they wouldn't have imagined before. Uh, but I think from a society perspective, we have to shift resources to that. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't think that 10 years ago we would have imagined that there would be billions of applications on the iTunes and Android stores that people are making some economic living from, uh, but that still required people to understand computing and programming. And, um, and, and data is really just, again, the oxygen for that. Uh, so <laughs> I'll go back to my core point on how do we make data as accessible as possible. Mm. And, and I'll ground it with an example. There's a mm. group called the Global Emancipation Network mm. that's working on a, a, a difficult problem, human trafficking globally. It would have been impossible to have solved 15 to 20 years, I think for a number of reasons, one of which is data was not very open 15 to 20 years ago. Um, it, and it's largely unstructured data. But if you can tap into the hundreds or thousands mm -hmm. of sources mm -hmm. across travel industry, retail industry, mm -hmm. uh, different uh, uh, local agencies, police agencies and others, patterns can emerge very quickly that show who the victims might be and who the perpetrators might be so you can actually be proactive mm -hmm. in trying to, to solve this very difficult problem. Mm -hmm. That only happens with broad access to data. <clears throat> and again, we've got to balance the anonymity needs yeah. with that access to data, but um, I, if, I think if we look at the past and we're willing to lean forward, AI and ML is coming. How do we participate in it? Then let's focus back on what do we have to do to make sure that the broadest number of people can benefit through, through mm -hmm. open data, mm -hmm. through transparency and mm -hmm. trustworthiness, and through the skilling necessary mm -hmm. so that people can get rapidly mm -hmm. retrained and we don't have the, the divide that I think is causing a lot of negative mm -hmm. ramifications around the globe today as people get nervous and try and do what we can never do, which is try and go backward. Like, you can never go backward. You can't even <laughs> yeah. stand still. Right? The world is moving, so how do you move with that with world, that. given that yeah. it's continuously yeah. evolving? We have no choice. We have no choice. Mr. <laughs> <laughs> And you know that, so, Mr. Liu, what do you think? What should you teach to your kids? What will be still be used in the next 30 to 40 years? What are the skills and the capabilities we need to grasp? 
I think anything emotional, emotional exchanges. I believe such kind of um, major or skills are highly uh, secured. For example, interview, right? Like this dialogue. Interview dialogue, maybe not. You think it's also replaced because you know the uh, the moderators. If uh, highly logic and uh, highly computed, you know that uh, you can be replaced uh, by the algorithm. And uh, in the future, that uh, technology in the future can have a, um, a very uh, uh, similar expression like people, and only very deep emotion. And uh, you can have different feeling when you talk to him or talk to this person. For example, if you want to make friends. You can make it's uh, it's uh, difficult to make friends with machine because uh, the feeling it takes a long time. It's not that you can't make friends with a machine. If you look at uh, these movies and the films, and the people can also feel in love with the robots sometimes. So, in nature, at emotional level, the uh, computation is based on logics. I. The other view I fully support is like this. In fact, when a portion of jobs disappear, of course, the new jobs are created. In the past, we don't have so many data analysts. We didn't have so many people working as programmers. And in the future, on the platform of AI, and we will call it the data democracy, AI democracy. What does it mean? Any kind of industry may use it. Any skills may use it, which is available in any companies. In the past, we are a manufacturer. We had loads of workers. In the future, we will have a lot of designers, engineers, data analysts. They will become a new professions. To me, you need to think about yourself. Do not think about the world. You don't need to worry about the world. You worry about self. You lose your job. It's not the world is changing. It's because of you. You didn't get prepared for the for the changes. So I hope next year I will still be here. Will not be replaced. I have still have two to three minutes, and this is a very very big question. There are so many、uh, dimensions of it, and we can only、uh, touch the surface of it. We already have、uh, some inspiring. Idea of you? Would you please、uh, use some、uh, words? What we should get prepared quickly? Mr. Liu said, "You prepare yourself." And what is most thing?、Uh, what makes you worry most? What kind of things you need to get prepared? You need to get prepared for yourself or for your, for your society. Well, I want to one, one, mention one thing that is education. Education is delayed. You know that the content of the education is delayed. What you learn today will be used in a long time, days, and.、Uh, I learned what I will be used in the next ten or twenty years. But you know, the the test book were made ten or twenty years ago, so there is strong conflict there. I think education in China, to a broader sense, we need to have a regulatory and a legal framework. Coin has two sides. You not only see the positive. Benefits, great changes in value to the society and the economy. The other side, once it is utilized by bad guys, it is something、uh, we should be fear of. I watched a movie. It was about a、uh, uh, drone and UAV, which can be controlled to killing people, and、uh, you, you can't imagine that. We need to get prepared. And if abused in、uh, financial sector, is also scary. <laughs> I know. Well,、uh, yeah. So, so、uh, quickly to answer the learning、mm -hmm. question, I would learn to learn, and、mm -hmm. I think it's still worth going to university.、Uh, not what specifically you learn; it will probably not be useful by the time you graduate.、Yeah. But to learn how to learn, and to learn、how、a group of learn, people、yeah. to make the contact. So,、mm -hmm. a university is、mm -hmm. more about connecting the networks,、mm -hmm. and I think this goes back to the most essential thing.、Mm -hmm. I don't. I I I think we will build robots that will、mm. fool people into falling in love with them, but I think the 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 people who will be the most、mm. safe and the、mm. most powerful are the ones who、mm. connect with other humans because、mm. that is actually the core of society for the reasons I gave before.、Yeah. Okay. So、uh, I guess I worry.、Uh, 
Well, let me tell you one more story about the jobs. Okay? We, we have only 30 oh, seconds left. But I won't. I'll, let, I'll, let, I'll pass. Sorry. Oh, I bet you your story is fantastic. Yeah. It's probably better. Than yeah. We'll uh, read your article. Because I, I, I'll, I'll repeat what you said. I think yeah. um, you're either growing or dying. So what can you do to <laughs> be excited about change? Yeah. Right? It's, it's always a constant change. Yeah. And we're just seeing it increase because the evolutions mm -hmm. in the digital mm -hmm. world mm -hmm. are not gated by DNA and genomes. Mm -hmm. They're, the cycles are, yeah. are much faster. Mm -hmm. So I think curiosity, curiosity. creativity, mm -hmm. creativity, interpersonal relationships. Learn how to learn. But yeah. underneath that, it really we, yeah. we have to love change mm -hmm. and embrace change. Yeah. And the more resistant we are, mm -hmm. I think that's the easiest way to get eclipsed and, and fall backwards. Thank you. That's a very great conclusion. <laughs> You're either growing or dying. 非常感谢各位嘉宾今天在这里给我们分享他们的观点。确实是。Thank you very much for your sharing. And this is a big wave, uh, regardless of your personal view. And the people say it's also a roller coaster. What should we do? That is to have your safety belt. And uh, we need to follow with the big wave. Being in the forum. Thank you.